Hi friends, in this lecture, we'll discuss approach to one of the most common yet challenging symptoms we face in medicine that is dyspnea. So let's start with a clinical case to make this topic more interesting and useful. A 62 year old male presents to the emergency department with progressive shortness of breath over four days. He reports orthopnea, leg swelling and occasional wheezing. He has a 30 pack year smoking history and is a known hypertensive. On examination, respiratory rate is 28 per minute, SpO2 is 88% on room air, there is bilateral pedal edema and there are crepitations at lung bases. So what are the possible causes of dyspnea in this patient? So at the end of this presentation, we will be able to approach this patient. Going on to the definition of dyspnea, firstly it is a subjective experience of breathing discomfort. We often hear patients say, I can't breathe properly, but what does that actually mean in medical terms. Since it is a subjective feeling, what one patient call breathlessness, other might tolerate very well, especially if there is a chronic condition. So patients often describe it as shortness of breath, tightness in chest or air hunger. So this is basically due to disproportionate effort or activity level. To understand the mechanism of dyspnea, we need to understand the physiology of breathing sensation. So our brain interprets normal sensation of breathing from chemoreceptor input like PaCO2 levels, pH of the blood, PO2 levels of blood. Then there are some mechanoreceptors in lungs and chest wall which signals the brain. And finally there is central perception in brainstem as well as cortex through the respiratory centers. If there is any mismatch between demand and response, it will lead to dyspnea. When we consider the classification of dyspnea, it is based on time course. We have to ask the patient when did the dyspnea start. Also grouping the causes based on duration will help to narrow down the differentials significantly. So acute causes are the one in which dyspnea is present for less than one week. These include pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, asthma and congestive heart failure. Subacute is one to four weeks which include anemia, pleural effusion. And chronic dyspnea, if it is present for more than four weeks, these include respiratory conditions like COPD, ILD, then congestive heart failure and obesity. Obesity will lead to dyspnea due to restriction. So it is a part of restrictive lung disease. For approaching any case of dyspnea, we'll have to think beyond the lungs because dyspnea is a multi-system issue. So this slide will give us a framework whether the work of breathing is increased or dyspnea is due to oxygen delivery failing. So increased work of breathing occurs in conditions like asthma, COPD, fibrosis. Increased respiratory drive occurs due to metabolic acidosis, fever. If there is abnormal gas exchange, dyspnea will occur. Conditions include ARDS, ILD. Cardiogenic causes of dyspnea include heart failure, pericardial effusion. Hematological causes include anemia and finally neuromuscular weakness in myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre syndrome as well as diaphragmatic palsy will also lead to sensation of dyspnea. Now let's move on to the approach to the patient. Firstly, we will discuss history taking. So if you are asking the right questions, 80% of your diagnosis is already made. Firstly, we have to ask about the onset, whether it is sudden or gradual. So we will classify it into acute, subacute or chronic. Then we have to ask if there is any trigger present like exertion, presence of allergens, posture. We will ask about associated symptoms like wheeze can be present in asthma, chest pain can be due to ACS or pulmonary embolism, orthopnea is present in CHF and fever can depict infection. We will also consider past history of COPD, heart disease or anemia and if the patient is on medications like beta blockers or amiodron. So amiodron has a chronic toxicity which can lead to interstitial lung disease. So we have to identify the red flags among the history. So the red flags include sudden onset of dyspnea, presence of chest pain, orthopnea, which basically depicts cardiac causes dyspnea and we have to refer this patient to cardiologist as soon as possible. Likewise, examination in a dyspnea patient is also very helpful. So we have to do head to toe examination, 
Raised JVP and pedal edema will be suggestive of heart failure. Pedal edema is suggestive of right heart failure. Then crepitations can be heard in pulmonary edema due to heart failure. Also, fine inspiratory crackles can be heard in interstitial lung disease. Wheeze can be heard in asthma, COPD. Also, wheeze can also be heard in congestive heart failure. These are uh, termed as cardiac wheeze. Asymmetry of chest can be seen with pneumothorax and pleural effusion. So these are the basic examination findings which can identify the cause of dyspnea. Now all we have done in history and examination, we need to back up it with some evidence. So here comes the role of labs and imaging. Also keep in mind, not every dyspnea patient requires a HRCT thorax. So tailor your approach according to the scenario. So basic workup of dyspnea includes CBC, which will rule out anemia or any infection. We'll advise ECG to rule out any cardiac ischemia or pulmonary embolism. So basically pulmonary embolism can show sinus tachycardia. There is a typical ECG sign known as S1, Q3, T3 sign. There is a deep S wave in lead V1. There is presence of Q waves in lead 3 and T wave is inverted in lead 3. Then chest X-ray can identify pulmonary cause of dyspnea. Also, we can see cardiomegaly in chest X-ray and we can also identify some valvular heart diseases like MS, which will show straightening of left heart border. ABG to rule out any acidosis. Anti-proBNP to uh, rule out cardiac cause of dyspnea. D-dimer for pulmonary embolism and spirometry for chronic respiratory cases as well as bronchial asthma. Now, if we are not able to identify the cause of dyspnea on this basic workup. Then we will go to advanced workup, which includes HRCT, chest, echocardiography, pulmonary function test, including DLCO, flow volume curves. Then finally, ventilation perfusion scan can be done for pulmonary embolism. So if a patient of acute dyspnea lands up in emergency, we'll first assess the ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. We'll check the SPO of the patient connect oxygen if required order chest x-ray urgent we have to rule out life-threatening causes like pulmonary embolism pneumothorax myocardial infarction we'll simultaneously order ecg as well as lab parameters and manage the uh, patient based on these findings on the other hand if a chronic dyspnea patient comes to you in opd we'll uh, take history and examination which we have discussed in detail in this presentation we can order spirometry to rule out obstructive versus restrictive pulmonary causes, echo to see LV dysfunction. Imaging can be ordered including chest x-ray. If chest x-ray is unable to find the cause, we can also order HRCT to diagnose ILD and masses and some labs like CBC, thyroid function test to rule out these conditions of dyspnea. Coming on to the last table, this will help you to confirm your suspicion and order the relevant lab test. So if you are suspecting CHF, the key feature is orthopnea and edema and you have to order ECO and BNP. COPD patients usually have history of smoking. There is wheezing present. There is barrel shaped chest. You will order spirometry. For pulmonary embolism, the patient comes with sudden onset dyspnea with pleuritic pain. Also, symptoms are more as compared to signs in pulmonary embolism. In this case, you will order D-dimer. You can also order uh, CT pulmonary angiography. Asthma is suggestive by reversible obstruction on spirometry. Then ILD patients have chronic dyspnea which presents with dry cough and clubbing which can be diagnosed on HRCT. Basically there are two patterns of ILD, UIP pattern and NSIP pattern which you can see in detailed lecture on ILD which is present on the channel. And finally, if you are suspecting anemia based on paleness and fatigue in patient, you will have to order CBC. Now coming on to the clinical case, which we discussed in the beginning of this presentation. So our patient was having dyspnea over four days with orthopnea, leg swelling, occasional wheezing. Patient is a smoker and hypertensive. SpO2 is 88%, respiratory rate is 28 per minute. So what is the diagnosis in the, this patient? So we'll approach the patient as we have discussed. Firstly, we'll see the onset. Since the onset is four days, which is less than seven days, it is acute onset dyspnea, acute onset dyspnea, 
Now, when we consider risk factors, these include smoking and hypertension. Then associated features include orthopnea, orthopnea, then leg swelling, pedal edema is present, leg swelling, pedal edema is present, wheezing, crepitations at lung base. So all these findings are suggestive of cardiac cause of dyspnea, cardiac cause of dyspnea due to CHF. This CHF precipitation can be due to acute MI. So in this case, we have to order urgent ECG. Also, BNP and 2D eco will help. So we have discussed in detail how to approach a patient with dyspnea. Now there is a MCQ for all of you, which you can answer in the comment section. Which of the following features most reliably distinguish cardiac dyspnea from pulmonary dyspnea? Options are wheezing, orthopnea, productive curve or chest tightness. Do comment your answer in the comment box.